I'm sick and tired of watching homeless people suffer and die on our streets. I'm sure the homeless people are very sick and tired of being homeless. But actually, we have homelessness because the people at the top of our country want it. And the people at the top are doing very well. I think homelessness has been deliberately created by the people who run our country. And I don't mean these guys. I mean their bosses, these guys. I think the people who run our country have made sure we don't have enough homes in our towns and cities for the people who live here. And because there aren't enough homes, the people who have the least money can't get a home, and so they become homeless. But actually, it's fairly easy to predict housing needs, and it is not difficult to build homes. So when there's a shortage of housing year after year after year, we have to start to think that it must be deliberate. And meanwhile, the other result of the housing shortage are the high house prices and high rents that millions of other Canadians are having to deal with. Our leaders know that if you reduce the supply of a necessity like housing, you'll push prices up. And that's exactly what they did. They reduced the supply, and then they allowed the whole world to come into Canada and buy our housing to push prices up even more. So now, Lots of Canadians have to go massively into debt just to get a roof over their head. How crazy is that, considering we are the second biggest country in the world with a population of only 35 million people? And some people, of course, are doing quite well from all of this. And as we see from Europe, builders can also do very well. And of course, speculators are very happy. Our governments used to build thousands of homes every year. This kept the supply up and prices down. But they stopped doing that decades ago. We would not have homelessness or crazy prices and rents if our governments were still building good housing. And that is exactly why they stopped. In my opinion, homelessness and high house prices and high rents are deliberate. These things have been done to us in order to destabilize our society and make fortunes for those at the top. And believe me, they have even worse things planned for us over the next few years. Can we stop them? I don't know, but good luck to us all. A recent study published in the prestigious journal of the American Medical Association titled Excretion of the Herbicide Glyphosate in Older Adults between 1993 and 2016 showed that exposure had increased by 500%. Glyphosate is one of the active ingredients in the most popular herbicide worldwide, Roundup, which has been classified a 2A carcinogen by the World Health Organization. Despite this, glyphosate is still not monitored by the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Pesticide Data Program or the Center for Disease Control. Recent court discoveries, which were made known to the public via the Monsanto Papers, released from the landmark San Francisco class action court case, allege glyphosate formulations caused non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Also revealed were internal Monsanto documents that Roundup has not been properly studied by the company for carcinogenicity. Monsanto's head toxologist, Donna Farmer, PhD, wrote, you cannot say that Roundup is not a carcinogen. We have not done the necessary testing on the formulation to make that statement. And in an email from Regulatory Affairs Lead at Monsanto Europe, Xavier Belvo corroborated, quote, we do not conduct subchronic or chronic studies with our formulations. As well, Monsanto, in collusion with the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, killed a 2016 investigation into the dangers and possible reclassification of glyphosate. They attempted to destroy the WHO ruling, exposed ghostwriting of pro-Monsanto mainstream media articles by Monsanto staff, and provided evidence for Monsanto's direct involvement in the illeg illegitimate retraction of the most damning independent, independent study on glyphosate's cancer-causing properties. The Seralini study, as it became known, 
documented liver and kidney toxicity, hormonal disturbances, and tumor formation in rats fed GMO corn treated with Roundup. And as well, a freedom of information request by the parent-led organization Moms Across America found that even though two independent labs found glyphosate contamination in five vaccines, the FDA and CDC stonewalled their request to test for and recall these batches of tainted vaccines. And where is Canada in all this, you ask? Not to worry, says Health Canada. In this year's rigorous science-based reevaluation, words like unlikely, not expected, of no concern, and has value for weed control are peppered throughout. Now, don't you feel better? The deep state. This past week, President Donald Trump released some thousands of documents related to the assassination of President John Fitzgerald Kennedy in November of 1963. A lot of people, including me, think it was the deep state that murdered President Kennedy because he was getting in their way and trying to do some good stuff. What is the deep state? If we look at this, it may give us some idea. I think the deep state is the people who really run the United States. For the most part, they control the Congress and they control the president and they own the media. You may or may not believe that a deep state exists. Personally, I believe it does exist and that it is very powerful. I certainly believe the deep state controls the United States and it controls Canada too, which is why our politicians do this kind of stuff to us. The people who ran the United States in the 1960s hated John Kennedy because he wanted to at least try for peace with the Soviet Union instead of war. President Kennedy also did not want a war in Vietnam. But the deep state did want war. And once Kennedy was dead, they got it. And about three million people were killed by that crazy war in Vietnam, deliberately started by the lunatics who run the United States. And they are doing exactly the same thing today. President Kennedy also fired the head of the CIA, Alan Dulles, because he felt Dulles was lying to him. And President Kennedy started to have the US government create its own money independent of the private banks. But that policy also stopped immediately after his assassination. So yes, I do believe the deep state murdered President Kennedy, and I'm certainly not alone. And by the way, I also believe the deep state was behind the attacks of 9-11. And again, I'm not alone. The people who run our world are not necessarily nice people. They enjoy their immense wealth and power and they have no intention of giving any of it up. And if they killed a president, and if they started wars that killed millions of innocent people in the Middle East, then think of how unimportant the rest of us are to them. The 1% of the 1% have far too much power over our society, and we have got to bring these people under control. This is Canadian Independent Media. Thanks for watching.